Is this thing going live? Yes, it's live. We're on the air. It looks like we're live. Absolutely, we're live. Welcome back to the show. I'm Hank Strange. I am not broadcasting live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios today. I'm in the Ozarks. Specifically, mm. we're in Branson, Missouri. We're on vacation. Lola and I are supposed to be on vacation. I'm not supposed to be working, but I'm, I am working. Check that out. We've got special guest, Walter yeah. Keller, Safety Harbor Firearms, and there goes your tactical gnome sighting right there. Like, do you guys have one of these tactical gnomes? Because, you know, we're, we're going to do a giveaway related to this and sightings of this tactical gnome in special places. Of course, once again, Walter has no clue about this. I'll oh, just drop it in. Naturally. <laughs> well... Actually, up, I, I, I want. I actually want to do a tactical gnome um, volume two, so to speak. So oh, we, we're going to redesign it. Do it. No. So this is going to become a collector's, or well, you're going to redesign this one? We'll come up with a, another version for shots. Only six months away now. So. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah, so we have to come up with something and get it in the process instead of being like a last minute. Ah, is it going to show up? Yeah, <laughs> like we, absolutely. Like, like we don't. We, we don't. This, that's last what happened year. this year. This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, yeah. Yeah. So what? So let's just explain to the folks that are joining in what we're doing here. Lola and I, we tried last night to broadcast while we were driving up here, just because it was crazy. We we're packing. You know, I procrastinated and didn't pack like I was supposed to. <laughs> so it was a little crazy, and so I, I decided to do it on the road, and we were able to do it, but I don't think it was technically good. So we wanted to do this again. And basically, I wanted to recap last week's stuff and kind of do like a download or, or a debriefing on the, the live broadcast we did last week. So for, for folks out there who are watching this you don't know, we're still doing the regular videos. Walter is on vacation. He's back now. We've got, we've got some Safety Harbor videos coming up. Right, Walter? Sure. Yeah, we're going to do some. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. we've got several things in the works. Yeah, we've got to give away that rifle, too. Um, oh, what what rifle are we talking about here? The 50? 50 cal, yeah. Yeah. Is the 50 BMG finish being constructed yet? Because we're building two of them. One is going to be one is going to be the, the the version that I'm going to be shooting, right? And th doing different tests and stuff like that. And then the other version is the one that we're giving away. So we've got to make so we got to make videos on building it. Oh, <laughs> and then, okay. Okay. And then somehow, well, not necessarily building the whole thing, because I know you guys are building a bunch of stuff at the same time. Right. So we've got to make a giveaway video. Then we actually have to give it away to someone, right? Okay. Yeah. On the box? Yeah. So, um, you know, let's let's jump in here. We've, you know, I've, uh, oh, you know what I was saying? I do have a bunch of videos coming out, normal videos. We did put up a trigger video this week on the SLT-1 trigger from KE Arms. Have you heard about this, Walter? I saw your video. Yeah, so I put it in the MPX now specifically. Lola, why are you messing with my camera? I want it like this. I, I want the camera like this. Don't touch it. Get back in the kitchen. Walter says, get back in the kitchen, woman. Make me a ham sandwich. A sandwich. <laughs> I don't. I don't eat ham, so I that know. doesn't make that doesn't make any kind of sense. Hey, look! Look what I got you. What? What? Oh, you got to talk so we can see that. Hold on. Let me. Let me see if I could. Let me see here. Hold on. I'm gonna. Whoa! Skulls. Is that mine? That's yours. Oh my God! That's gonna be on my broadcast table. That's why I bought <laughs> They're it. They're so Holmes. beautiful. <laughs> look at that, man! That's awesome. Skulls. Skulls. I know you were sending me pictures of stuff. This is from Dead uh, uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. That's really cool. That's for you. Yeah. See, Walt Walter got me a skull cup. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's really that's really cool. Uh, you know what I got you, Walter? Check this out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, that's, that's so terrible. <laughs> no, so that yeah, that's really cool, man. Thanks a lot. I, I appreciate that. So yeah, let's get back to this SLT one trigger out because okay. people want to know about it. On task. now, it's it's for the AR fifteen platform, quote unquote. So it works in three hundred eight nine millimeters, two two three, obviously, and um, 
one of the things that it's I I heard that it was good for is the MPX. I know you've got uh, MPX and MCX, right? Correct. Correct. Have you put in any aftermarket triggers in there? Mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So so um, I heard the MPX and I think the MCX was do specifically the MPX was doing damage to aftermarket triggers. So this trigger does not have a disconnect. Okay. And, you know, and it's a uh, drop in or cassette style. So we're gonna we're gonna have to do some testing on that, man. Yes, I just got a uh, two thousand rounds of nine millimeter. So. Oh, cool. Okay. So there we go. I can I can totally I can totally let's, help you burn through two thousand rounds of nine millimeter. <laughs> let's bust some caps. You know yeah, yeah. Let's bust some caps up in this joint. <laughs> so we we are doing traditional videos. That's what I want people to know. So let's get to like serious business here, right, Lola? So what was the first video we did last week? Let's uh, start with last Monday. Okay, so last Monday we intro the Hangouts on Air with the um, what happened at Boda Consulting. Okay, so here you go. So yeah, so last week's, the first video that we did was, so what happened to Boda, Con Boda Consulting? And um, the reason why I did that video is because lots of people were asking me about Boda. I guess, you know, he was like a hot topic. He does some really... Um, uh, can I say creative and imaginative with flair plus a little bit of crazy <laughs> training tactics that he um, that he's I guess working on and people you know that he he put out videos then then other people took those videos and used that to attack him um, you know and he was called like the world's worst trainer etc and lots of people were coming to me to ask me about this and I did actually, I do actually, I'm like friends with him on Facebook, as well as the guys from um, the Urban Sharpshooters Gun Club, which supports him. So I had those guys come on and talk about that. Did you catch that, Walter? Did you see um, any of that? A little bit of it, not, not the whole thing. Yeah. Did you hear about any of this stuff? I don't know if you're like in the gun blogosphere. I'm not following yeah. the training stuff that closely. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have I have thoughts on the whole training thing too. So, what are um, your thoughts before I, before I um like unpack what happened in that video a little bit? And if and if folks out there have more questions or if you haven't seen the video, go see it. It's it's here on YouTube. It's about like it's a really long video, and um, I think it's pretty thorough. So, what what are your thoughts on training? Well, you know, it's kind of like when you turn the TV on and somebody's trying to sell you Jesus. Um. Mm -hmm. they've, 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 they've got to, you know, they're trying to make money, obviously. So um, mm -hmm. the trading thing, I guess, if you need it and you feel you need it, I guess it's good. But some people probably do it just because somebody said they need to do it. And maybe maybe they don't really. So you're you're not for training. You're no, against training. No, 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 no. You know, I know you mm -hmm. need to know how to use your guns and, and make sure, right. that, you know. Some people, that's a, that's a good route for them because, you know. They, they get a lot from it. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The first time I went for a concealed weapons class, I learned how to shoot better. But right. you know, that was from a cop. He showed me how to, mm -hmm. how to do things better. Um, yeah, I think, we could, I think we can all stand for some training, um, especially me. But, you know, you do have to be careful who you go to for training. I mean, right. and you what, know. What, and what level you can it create. Is. I mean, yeah. Okay. And yes, I, think, I agree with you. Think yeah. about what level you're at. If you're just getting into it, like maybe some NRA stuff, there's tons of NRA. Okay. and Learn, even, learn, uh, learn, how, to hit, learn how to hit the target first. You know? Right. You don't have to be yeah. SEAL Team 6, you know, right. just because you said you, just to say you did it, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know. Right. Absolutely. Learn how your gun works. You know, learn how to make it safe, how to make it dangerous, how to hit a target, as Walter said, and definitely get training outside of yourself and outside of just watching videos and things like that that are out there. Right, right. But if you're going to get training, you know, you need to be discerning. It's like one of those situations of the buyer should be where and you should look into every trainer. I, I'm not just going to say Voda. I think, you know, th that's like a unique case of, of something that's going on here uh, with him. But you should definitely take the time to research who you're going to train with and ask people like maybe talk to people who've trained with them before do you have some um do, before lola goes to questions we've got someone from sweden who's actually tuning in walter all right sweden. excellent sweden yeah, yeah. that's good yeah. yeah 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Walter, any cool guns come out of Sweden? You're the you're the gun expert here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lotte, twenty millimeter. Twenty millimeter lotte. Do you have one? Yes, I do. Okay, we got to shoot that. Yeah, we got. I I, I got to finish putting it back together. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? It's in parts. <laughs> I just got to finish mounting the barrel. That's all. Little, oh, little, okay. Things, okay. little things. Okay. All right. Cool. So, Lola, were there any like big questions that you see or comments on there that you know that maybe Walter and I could uh, discuss with the folks real quick? You know, the the consistent theme with the questions and comments on that from that particular episode were basically um, how did you maintain your composure and mm -hmm. unbiased um, throughout the whole interview, um, and then also basically that it's sad that some someone that is sad as soon as someone criticizes Lucien, um, it becomes a race issue, even though it's purely because of the unsafe nature of his quote unquote training. Okay. So let me start with the last one. Did you hear any of that, Walter? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. So do you, do you want to comment before I get on there? No, go for it. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I really do believe a lot of the the uh, comments or flack or criticism that he's getting has to do with what he's doing, you know, um, th what people call the unsafe nature of it. I mean, I think it's, it's, um, there's certain things in there that I'm, that I don't really think are that big of a deal, but there is some, there are a few things in there that I think he put out there, he put it out there and it's on him. He put out these videos, people took the videos and used it to criticize him you should understand that when you make videos we make videos all the time walter knowing <laughs> we're gonna get flack <laughs> in some cases even in some cases you know we have people like there's all kinds of stuff that happens when you put videos out there right yeah yeah if you don't want to if you don't want somebody to see something don't definitely don't put it on the internet right and i think that the folks that he that they were trying to bring up as being racist I don't find my in my experience with those people and even in our conversation I think at the end of it they acknowledge that they didn't have like real evidence that these guys are being racist towards them and we and we you know there are pe I, I believe there's race in everything right and I believe that you know in every segment of society there's a little bit of racism um, but we have to be careful with that with um, <clears throat> with putting that out there because when it really happens we want to be able to deal with it but we don't want to like cry wolf every just, time somebody says something it's racist you know it's right like, you know and there's a lot there's like a lot of that stuff getting thrown around i mean you know people accuse you of being racist sometimes right oh, I don't, which i don't look at my which logo. I don't understand. Look yeah at my yeah logo. Your lo yeah 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 your logo people are like um you know i don't are you okay talking with this because i am oh yeah i'm fine I, I, yeah mm -hmm. go ahead i i, I know it I Africa core, right? You take out yeah. the swap sticky and put my logo in. I have a palm yeah. tree like that in my front yard, by the way, too. So yeah, I mean, you're in you're in Safety Harbor. You're Florida. in Florida. Yeah, it's all palms and stuff like that. How? What about U.S. Palm? They have the same yeah. thing. Right. Just have U.S. in it. And you know, yeah. like, I don't know. And look, let's say let's say like like so so what's happening for folks out there that don't know? There's people that are saying that um, the Safety Harbor Firearms logo is basically taken from a swastika, so therefore Walter is a Nazi. <laughs> now I, I do enjoy German guns, by the way. Yeah, absolutely, and you've got a lot of them, and so do I. I enjoy German guns. I mean, the technology the Germans had was amazing, man. These guys. These guys could be ruling the world right now. You wouldn't see people looking like me hanging around. So, um, if it wasn't for a lot of things, I might not be here either. So, yeah, yeah, and and so let's talk. Like, just to quickly go on that subject, since we're talking about race and everything, here's something I would like people because it seems like every now and then this comes up in forums with Safety Harbor Firearms. So consider this, guys, for a second. This gentleman that is sitting here on it, you know. In Florida, and we're t we're having this conversation. His his family, you know, this is a family business, and this family business supports the Hank Strain situation financially. If you look at my face, and you can call him a racist. There's something wrong with you, <laughs> because I mean, like our families are friends. We always hang out. We break bread. I mean, the, the, yeah. 
he's Walter's always generous with me. Like you see here, you know, at the beginning of this video, he bought me a cup. He's that kind of guy. He always thinks about me. He thinks about my family. I think about him. I love his family. I mean, we've, you know, we've interacted and done so much stuff. I don't, I don't get it. If you, if you know us, how can you level that charge? And that's what I'm worried about in the community that we're leveling this charge and it's totally baseless. Yeah. But it happens, right? Yeah. And when I, when I meet somebody, it's like, it's like, it doesn't matter if they're what color they are really, as long as we treat each other like humans, yeah. you know, then yeah. we'll go from there. If it Absolutely. starts, if it starts badly, then it's going to not work. Right. You know, it's just, that's yeah. life, you know? Yeah. Um, and we, we all, you know, even though we would all like to get along, we don't all get along. So the other, happen. right. And the other part of that, I think people wanted to know, like, how come I was so composed and everything in that video? Um, you know, I really wanted to get to the bottom of it. I think that's what's going on there. I, I have a very inquisitive mind, and I know Lola sometimes is always, she gives me flack because she says, you know, you're always joking around and having fun, and people don't see the very serious, inquisitive, thinking, <laughs> you know, investigative yeah. side of you. And so probably you guys got a little bit of a look at that because I really wanted to know what was up. I didn't, I didn't want to tear him down. Or, you're, not or gonna, tear you're, down. Not, you're not gonna get what you want if you start being negative you know exactly yeah, exactly but at the same time you know when he was when they were bringing up stuff I, I really wanted to dig into it and I really gave them a lot of time and I said in that video that I would give them a chance to come back and I will I mean it's time you know not necessarily right now but as time goes on um, I would like to to bring them back if they want to come back, just so we can see if anything's changed or, you know, what's going on with that situation. But it was something that was really important to me. And sometimes these videos are going to be fun, obviously, but sometimes they're going to be like that because I think there's really serious issues that we have to deal with in the gun community, and and that's why I'm doing all of this. Even you know, there are a lot of people I think that want to know why we're doing this, but these are discussions that have to be had. All right, so that's what's going on there. Okay, so um, let's go. Let's go to the next video. So, what was episode two? Okay, so then episode two, Walter was traveling through the U.S. So you had Walter and Babyface P on, right. on that day discussions about movies. Right, and they and Walter was talking about the gun museum in right. uh, yeah, in Cody, Wyoming. Yeah, so you want to you you can recap on this real quick, Walter, because you were there. <laughs> yeah, the uh, museum. Wild, uh, well, uh, help me out here, Peggy. Wild Bill. Wild Bill Cody uh, Museum of the West. I think that's what it's called. No, no, just Cody. Yeah, Cody. Anyways, it's awesome. There's like five Cody museum. museum. Yeah, five museums mm -hmm. in one in Cody, Wyoming. Um, you got yeah. the firearms part. There's stuff about American Indians. Um, stuff about the West. Um, mm -hmm. A section about um, Cody's uh, Wild Big Cody's uh, life and his, you know, his uh, Wild West show that he had and all that. So okay, really so cool. he was called Wild Bill Cody, is what? Uh, like, um, right, right, right. I think it was yeah, Wild okay. Bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, the uh, Buffalo Bill Cody. Yeah, Buffalo. Buffalo Bill. Bill. Buffalo yeah. Bill. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I had it wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Good yeah, thing it was you caught that. <laughs> it was a lot to see. And um, a very um, modern museum. The firearms part is very cool. They have like seven thousand firearms in their in their collection, over seven thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's. A, I've heard of that too. And I think you know, if we get a chance, that'll probably be. I think it was great that you guys went there as a family. If we get a chance, maybe that'll be a cool thing for us to go there and kind of like walk through. It would be cool to um, go there with an interest in a certain some kind of firearm stuff and see. They'll you know do a little research type stuff and see some of their stuff that's not on display. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I saw I saw guns there that I haven't seen in person anywhere else. Yeah, so, so that's something we should definitely put on the list. Um, one of the other things I'd like to put on the list is the FBI uh, training academy's vault. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. FBI's vault down, in Monaco. Down low, yeah. <laughs> down yeah. Low. Um, we do we do have a line actually on getting into that vault. So it's just a matter of like following up. I think stuff like that would be amazing. And I would love to do it with someone like yourself that, you know, you've obviously got like a, a much wider knowledge of these things than I do. Cause I'm just going to look at it like, Ooh, that's shiny. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I look at it historically and then I look at it mechanically, you know, and that's mm -hmm. what kind of interests me. And Yeah, um, and I think you're always looking for inspiration as well, right? Yes, always, yeah. yes. Yeah. New, that's, new, that's the, put some new ideas in the skull cap and see what, you know, comes out of it. You know? What comes out. So what kind of questions did we get on that video? We talked about a lot of other things. We were talking about current events. Yeah. I think it was a good video. It was a good video. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So did we get any general comments on that no one? General comments on that. Yeah. So after that, the following day, we had Robert Butler of Canass Technical Training out of Colorado. Okay. And so he presented a different type of training. And uh, I know the thing that really caught your attention was the trauma. The, the medical the side medical of it. The medical side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, we'll go on from that one. I think you guys should check out that video. It's a good, you know, good conversation with us. We're just talking about like whatever comes to mind. And if you enjoy those kinds of conversations, I think, you know, it, it's good. So now the episode three was with Robert Butler from Kanaz Tactical, and he came on to talk about the shooting in, in uh, Virginia at the, uh, you know, there was this congressman as, as well as some other people that was shot and they were training for the Republicans versus Democrats baseball game that happens. And it's happened. It's consequently happened since then. And um, there was a gunman with what we thought, I guess, in the beginning was an AK-47 turned out to be an SKS. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and that's that's a whole nother thing, too. You know, automatically it's an assault rifle, you know, and it's. Yeah. Well, that so an SKS would have been totally legal according uh, to all these bands. Right. I mean, right. It, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Some places you might not be able to have a bayonet on it. But yeah. um, aside from that, yeah, um, and and the fact too that you know this guy's a big Bernie supporter, and uh, you yeah, know. you know, and I I also think that we've had celebrities and and other politicians and people in the news media and um, other walks of life trying to goad people into attacking. You know, since since Trump became president, something crazy you know i thought there was some crazy stuff going on when obama came became president i no. didn't vote for him i was never a supporter of his but wow since trump became president we have really gone to batshit crazy levels oh yeah yeah it's it's uh, yeah i mean okay with obama sometimes you some of these idiots would do the news thing and you know do him in effigy or something like that yeah but no bloody heads or no um no plays about his assassination or, yeah, or or all this crap is going on, and we're just supposed to yeah. go. Oh, you know that's freedom of speech. Well, yeah, I wasn't. I, I mean, I don't. I don't believe in doing things to people in effigy, and I was not a fan and not supportive of people doing things to Obama or any other president or any other person for that matter. You know, in, in effigy. Um, but I think that there's like a special kind of crazy that's going on now. I mean, you just mentioned the play. So for people out there who don't know about this, there's actually a play in New York City based on a Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare's version of Julius Caesar. And in this play, the character of Julius Caesar is um, he's basically a, a Trump impersonator. Right, right, right. And, and all the cast members take turns killing him, stabbing him to death, brutalizing him on stage, you know, and making obvious references to the presidency. That's crazy. That's illegal. Yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's incendiary. It's a lot of different things, but it's really, really, it's another level of crazy that we're actually having a play like that in New York City and people think that's okay. That's an okay thing to do. And if if you would flip the script on that and and do that to Obama oh or you know oh Bill Clinton God. or yeah oh yeah it'd, it'd be, be it'd insane be the, yeah oh yeah yeah they would be they'd be they wouldn't be able to contain themselves yeah um, right yeah you know I mean and as you mentioned like what Kathy Griffin did when she you know had this decapitated head. I mean, this is just get. This is really insane, and people are getting hurt out there, and and um, obviously, and uh, there's going to be more of that if this doesn't stop. And we've got to push back, I think, against this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, well, like I always say, the best way to get these people is financially. Um, right. You have to, like all these protesters and all these different groups, there there's money coming from somewhere, 
keeping mm-hmm. this all going, giving them the bus mm-hmm. rides so the lazy asses can get to where they're going. Right. So cut the money off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So that, that was, that was a, that was a good conversation. And I think like, like Lola was mentioning, one of the really good things that came out of that was Robert, Robert Butler was saying, people don't get enough training in what to do if oh. there's a gunshot wound yeah. or if you, you just have some other accident and you're losing I mean, a lot of blood. Something like this slips and you cut your half your finger off. You know. Goodness gracious! Yeah, that's. Oh, that's one of my. I, I bought this uh, on our trip. Ooh, that's nice. Is that what kind? Is that a Bowie or a Tonto? I can't tell. No, it's it's supposed to be a kind of a like a actual butcher knife, like for for oh, doing okay. animals and. But it's got an elk bone handle and. It's beautiful. It was a guy that's in. Nicely um, polished. Oh, oh yeah, it's pretty as a mo. <laughs> yeah, that looks like pearl. <laughs> oh, buffalo. I, I mean, um, excuse me, buffalo bone. I just got corrected by my staff. Oh, um, buffalo bone, and so and then what is that brass like around the the? Yeah, uh, there's there's, and, there's some up here, and and the blade is actually made from an old, um, uh, like a big wood saw blade. Oh wow, that is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, so an older gentleman makes them, and um, standing uh, uh, standing buffalo knives, and he lives standing up in, buffalo knives. Okay, yeah, he lives up in Minnesota, so um, he was at the um, Crazy Horse, um, I guess monument that's under in the in the works of being carved out okay yeah i saw some pictures of that that's also yeah. a very cool thing that's been no. going on for like since what the 60s or, or 70s 40s 40s wow 40s, okay yeah. worse the only thing they've got really carved out so far is his head um his face. a little bit of, yeah did they start the horse no right he's working on the hand that goes mm-hmm. out to hold the reins okay but the thing is the thing is ginormous i mean it's yeah. it makes when it's finished, it'll make Mount Rushmore look like, as I say, a flea on a dog's ass. Yeah, small potatoes. <laughs> no, um, no disrespect to Mount Rushmore, but um, right, it's a right. ginormous project, and it's all privately funded too. No, no government involvement. So yeah, and I think that it's getting the work is getting passed down uh, through generations of right. that family to his family. Yes, correct. Yeah, right, so. that's pretty cool. Okay, so we got some comments on the previous video. Well, the the stuff we were talking about with. Um, with uh, Robert Butler about you know like like these plays and uh, what Kathy Griffin did and someone said is that not freedom of expression you have any comment to that before we move on to the next episode um, um, yeah I guess it is it is you know? it's covered like we believe in freedom of speech of speech yeah. you know and expression I'm but an artist what, I believe in all that but there's a line but we have to point, have a line yeah, as human beings right what, what point is it like over the top, you know, or are you doing it just to get, you know, get time on TV, then blame somebody else when nobody likes you anymore? Uh, and, and, and if people get hurt, like I look at, like when you do things in effigy to people, this is my personal opinion, that's like witchcraft, magic, black magic. Oh, a little, you know, voodoo, voodoo. A little voodoo on your ass. That's what I think. Yeah, it's like voodoo and all that kind of stuff. And and some of the people doing that, obviously not Kathy Griffin, but some of the people doing that say that they are, you know, Christians and stuff like that. But that's paganism right there. Uh, you know, I mean, we can get into a quagmire of this conversation. Yeah. But, you know, I think that, that absolutely we, we believe in freedom of speech. We don't have to consume it. And we also have the freedom of speech to say that it's terrible. I don't you have know. to. I won't ever watch anything with Kathy Griffin again. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> did you? Did you watch anything? Because no, I, I, no, I, I cannot watch, stand her. <laughs> I, no, no. She at one time she wasn't too bad, but like a lot oh, of these, okay. a lot of these. Um, You're older than actors, me, I guess. <laughs> I never liked her. <laughs> watch it, Sonny. I'll get you. <laughs> uh, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> um, uh, once you know the truth, the true um, the way these people feel. They're gone. They're non-people to me anymore. They don't exist. So, yeah, but we've got we've got other people like Sarah Silverman, Madonna. You've got people like calling for like revolution and, and well, you know, you know like, war and blowing up stuff. Uh, bring it on. Yeah. Well, you know, the the, the point I want to make is I yeah we don't you know. No, I mean I'm not looking for that. But if yeah. you want to start it in the neighborhood, it won't end yeah. very well. Well, yeah, the chaos that will come behind us really having a civil war in this country is not is not something that any of us really want to see. No, no, but no. you know, it's it's it is it is their right to express themselves that way. Absolutely, they have that right. 
and we have the right to criticize it and to shun them and to hold them accountable when people get hurt behind it. So, okay, so what was the next video, Lola? Next day was Luis Valdez, who's um, a candidate for the NRA Board of Directors. So that was episode five? That was five, episode four. Four? Mm -hmm. Episode four. So episode four, let me, you know, so episode four was Luis Valdez running for NRA Board of Directors. So um, did you get a chance to see that one? I saw a good portion of it, yes. Okay, so what do you think about that? You're an NRA guy, right? Are you a life member? Yes, I am. Okay, so I what actually, do you think? I, I actually joined the day after Bill Clinton got elected. <laughs> You're gonna make me choke. <laughs> really? I was, I was so I was just like, oh. What did you join? Uh, you got you can't. Yeah, so I did it right what? after the day he got elected. Oh, okay. It looks. It, it sounds like um, Spencer wants to know what you joined. Yeah, the NRA, Spence. The NRA. <laughs> That's my youngest. If anybody yeah. else, you know, yeah. and he's he's taller than me, so don't don't feel bad for him or anything. When yeah, <laughs> so okay, so yeah, you've been a you've been a member for a long time. You're not a lifetime member, are you? Yeah. Oh, so okay, you got the lifetime membership. I did that. I, I did that the day after Bill Clinton got elected. Oh, oh, right. Okay, so you got the lifetime membership the day after. You've been an NRA member longer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, you know, so. What do you think about the whole concept with with Luis Valdez? What I'm trying to do and what he's trying to do is there's about se there's like 75 of these board members and I think there's one there's really 76 because there's one transitionary dude and uh, we're trying to put some guys on there that are real genuine gun guys that really care about yeah. the Second Amendment, you know that um, that are not the what we want to call the old we we call them this the old fuds. Totally. I don't know if you've heard this. Toting the flintlocks? Yeah, not just that. I mean, it's just there's certain things that they don't want to come up to speed on oh. and and realizing that the NRA should be doing. Now, Lewis's uh, opinion, and I kind of agree with him, is that the NRA is a um, civil rights organization. What do you think about that? Civil rights? Yeah. Um, I don't know, um, you know. I, I yeah. think you're um, the following, uh, the next night's um, conversation – with mm -hmm. um, black guns matter mm -hmm. that's where the nra should be headed um you think so yeah okay because there's a huge huge audience that's being missed right okay so let's uh so let's jump from this i just want to remind people check out the video with luis valdez he's running we're trying to get him you know he's got a certain amount of ballots that he has to get signed check that I, out i thought the election was over um it was but the, but he's running for 2018. okay all right well he's on my yeah. list then so yeah, along with so, along with the, along with the other guy who's the lawyer, I forget his name right off. Yeah, the top Kraut. Of head. Yeah, Kraut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam I voted, Kraut. I voted for him too. Yeah. Yeah. So did I. Yeah, we want to get Adam Kraut, Luis Valdez, and a lot of other good guys in there. That's this is what we really need to do. We need to take back the NRA because personally, it's not about uh, hunting. Okay. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Now, some people aren't going to want to hear that from you. But uh, or we can say it's not just about that, but it's right, right, right. you know that's that's what I think Lou Lou was trying to say, and you know I think that there's a lot of stuff that's been going on lately with the NRA that I'm really really disappointed in, and I don't think they're representing us. They're kind of making it look like they represent us. So if we want them to actually represent us, we need to put people in there. That you know we need some new blood. We need to bring it into the right. future. Update right, it. Right, right, right. Exactly. Kind of like the Republican Party, right? Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, you got to get real people that really like freedom, not just like their job there and their health yeah. benefits. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I know Republican like I know I've heard stories about the Republican Party, you know, when when it when they had to support Trump, putting people in there to run the, his campaign that they didn't think were going to do anything and hoping that those that the campaign would fail. You know, that's a problem. We've got to get those guys out of there. Right. And oh, then yeah. they're like, I've heard stories where they're mad when these guys were actually going out there and hitting the streets and campaigning and pushing for Trump and all that kind of stuff. The Republican Party was mad about that. And this is what people need to understand. Like, we're going to take over this stuff. They had no strings on Trump. Trump had his own money, so they couldn't control him. Yeah, and that's, what, that's what they don't like about him. All and the other ones, say like Marco Rubio. He don't have a oh, pot. To, he don't have a pot to pee in. So he's <laughs> yeah. got a. He's he's being controlled by the as a puppet. 
because if you don't yeah. play, their, play their game, they cut you off. Yeah, those are the real politicians that we don't want in there. And I think that's happening with the NRA and they're giving us lip service, but they're not really doing anything and not really representing us in a lot of ways, which we'll probably talk about. So you, you wanted to go into, at, what was that, episode Stop. five, Lola? That was, um, right, so. That was Maj Touré? That was Maj Touré, um, Black Guns Matter. And he was mentioned in that initial quota consulting video. Right. Um, and, had it, and I think he has his own set of um, controversies around him. So he came on to get on the record. Okay, so yeah, episode five is Maj Touré. Like, who is Maj Touré? He, um, if you didn't hear Lola there, um, he was mentioned in the Voter Consulting video in a negative way. So he came on, he did address that, and then there's some other um, controversies or rumors and things like that about him out there, and he addressed those as well. You know, I think it's important what he's actually doing, and that's what you were saying, right, Walter? Yeah, I, I watched that from front to start to finish you can ask peggy she was a. Uh, so you like this one you like this one this one yeah, captured you yeah, i had to watch it because i wanted to know what he was about you know okay i, I think did he, you feel like you found out like you learned something about him that you did because you must have heard something about him before this right well i saw him walking around i saw the shirt and i didn't know what it all meant you know everybody has different okay. things but i think he's he's for real he's a real thing you know and uh, mm -hmm. but the nra needs people like him that can go into those neighborhoods because mm -hmm. they don't trust a white guy or a white girl coming in there or, or even a black guy in a suit. You know, it's like, yeah, right. yeah I got out of here, you know. He's yeah, not a, he's, absolutely. He's, he's, he's not down with it. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Maj is clearly, Maj is clearly, you know, from from the hood. And I, you know what I like? <laughs> My favorite line is when he said we want to make the hood great again. <laughs> well, well, that's another subject, too, um, mm -hmm. that we could chat about, too. Why, why is the hood is great again? People don't have anything to do. There's no more jobs in the city. They've taken them all out and shipped them all out to China and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things, I think. You know, my people, and I'm, and I'm speaking specifically here of my ethnicity, you know, black people, I, I feel, man, if Martin Luther King came back to this time, you know, let's say aliens had kidnapped him and that's how he left instead of the horrible way that he did and they brought him back to our time and they put him on this planet, I think he would be disappointed with us because we've gone backwards, you know. I, I really feel that if you sit down and you look at history and, and, and you see the things, yes, there, there were, you know, there were really bad times in America for, for people of color up until like the 60s, 70s, even, you know, the 80s, but it seems like you know, we got all these entitlements and things like that. And what it did was it served to like bring us down and handicap us. And then we gave up on education and skills and hard work and taking right. care of the family. And somebody, and some, somebody's paying you to stay home. Yeah, it's sad. It's terrible. I mean, I, I know that there's obviously people that need help out there, not just black people. There's lots of people who really need help, but it's become institutional slavery, institutional, um, uh, how can I put it? It's like a brainwashing thing, you know, where people are like, yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, this is the easy way. Have a bunch of babies, you know, don't, you know, don't work, don't take care of your families, do this thing, do that thing, forget about an education. I'm not saying, I'm not saying at all that that's all black people. There's lots right. of professional there's a lot of white people the same way too. Yeah, there's a lot of there's white actually, people like that. There's a lot more white people that way, actually. Yeah, and unfortunately, we have a lot of people that there used to be people came from outside of America to America and they worked hard. Now you've got a lot of people coming to America and doing the same thing. You know, a lot of immigrants like me, you know, I represent the immigrants as well. And there's a lot of immigrants that are coming here just to get the welfare. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that's because it's there. They yeah. Go to, they go to England for the same thing too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I think that... I would like to see us become great again, whether you want to put it as the hood or, you know, people of color, people who feel like all these rights and, you know, um, the Constitution and the and the Bill of Rights, et cetera, don't really apply to them. Hell yeah, they, it applies to you. Or they can't own a firearm. Yeah, you can own a firearm. You can be a legal business person. You can, you know. Right. You don't have to live in the hood. You know, the yeah. hood. You can move out of the hood. Well, you can also, you can live in the hood if that's what you want. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it in terms of, you know, the hood used to be something else. It's a completely different thing, I think, from what it is today, well, if right? It, if it's a neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you can you can have a neighborhood and a community and be safe and not and, and not feel fair and not be subjugated to the criminals well, there. Or you live in a twenty story housing project. That's not the hood. That's a that's a storage facility. Yeah, unfortunately, you, you know, you're right. So I like what he's doing and I agree with you. I think that you you know, it's not something that everyone could do. It's not even something that I could do. It's the same thing I think with, with Colin Noir that he's, I know he gets some hate all the time. And um, I think that's terrible because, you know, that's a really brilliant young man in his own way, completely different from Maj Touré, but you know, they're obviously friends and- But they, and, but you need that. You gotta have, he's, he's making ways into, I say yeah. the, old, the old white guys club, so to speak. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but but um, Colin Noir actually put out a letter today speaking about the Philando Castile uh, situation. Oh, okay. okay. Which is surprising, you know, like a lot of people are saying that he wasn't going to talk about it or say anything because he, you know, he does work for the NRA, and you have to respect that, right? I mean, yeah, he's got a know, good, he's got a, he's got a good gig. Yeah, he does. But one of the things I like about him, he but still you can't speaks to himself mind. out. Right, you can't say yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, and and people are saying that you know I've heard people say that he's a sellout, and I don't really think so. Yeah. I think he's doing a good job. He's doing something that we need to do. We need to have someone there, and he's a young guy, man. This is just the beginning it's, it's for a, him. It's a bridge. Yeah, he's building. You yeah, gotta, you got to somebody. Somebody's got to do it. Like, you know, our other friend there. So yeah, same thing. Same thing with Mars. So I think there's some good things that he's doing out there. We kind of have to support that and try to bring those guys over the the good guys. Obviously, right. there may be some bad guys in there, and I think people may have concerns about that. Um, so do I. But I really believe that guns specifically are an equalizer, and you can't stop the bad guys from having them anyway. But if if the good guys got them too, they think yeah. twice. They think twice about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, right, right. So that that was I think that was a really good conversation for me to have because it's kind of like a similar situation to with Voda that I didn't really know much to Ray. Um, I, I, I did hear of him. I did hear about Black Guns Matter. I saw him at the NRA show and he was like a superstar. <laughs> it was crazy. Everyone was there. I didn't get an opportunity to like introduce myself or anything like that. And unfortunately, his name came up. So I try to give a platform to people who, you know, if, if if someone feels wronged or slighted by us, right. I do try to give them a platform. Um, you know, there there are some exceptions. There are some folks out there who who um, I'm not giving a platform just based well, yeah, on yeah. certain language and ways that they're acting and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm not going to say behind the scenes, but on my social media, there's people fighting and getting really out of hand and. You know, I don't know if you've seen any of that because I know you look at my, um, you look at my social media, and and people don't realize that they're saying really horrible things to each other in a public forum. Uh, oh yeah, well, you know, you can say anything you want on the internet because you're, you know, you got big, you know, you just, you're strong yeah. like bull on the internet. <laughs> you know, yeah. you but you know, it's gonna live, it's gonna live forever because I'm not gonna delete that stuff. So if people are on my my um, social media and they're fighting and they're getting, you know, they're really carrying on. I, I hope you guys realize that I'm just gonna leave it there, <laughs> you know? And well, um, people will come in and judge you based on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but back to um, what he's doing, um, I found it really interesting and I think, uh, like I said, it's a huge audience that the NRA's missed because they didn't have anybody that can talk to mm -hmm. talk, you know, and, and get yeah. out and who's not a, you know, uh, from, you know, got a perfectly straight record and all this stuff. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. No, you know? no. So um, everyone can be re rehabilitated. Every, you know, every man has the opportunity to make himself a better man. None of us are perfect, man. We all he, make mistakes. The hardest thing to, to do is to admit you were wrong or that you yeah. had an issue. And he kind of admits that, that he had a, that it right up front. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And if you get that out in the air, they, what can you say? Yeah. You know, I, I like the way I like the way that he's doing what he's doing. And, you know, I hope he, he keeps doing that. And, uh, you know, and, and I hope that good things come out of that. Right. And I know that some of what's going to come out of it is because he's so honest and raw about his honesty. There's some things in there that people may not like conversations that will be had that people, you know, maybe feel uncomfortable about having. I get it. Look, we have to talk. 
you know, there's a lot of this that we really cannot do anything about, if, to be honest with you. But yeah. I think that if we talk about it, we can help some people and maybe um, just help people get that kind of thing out of their system. I'm not trying to incite anyone to do anything negative or destructive. Right. I really, I'm the opposite of that. You know, people chastise me because I say peace out on my videos and they're like, oh, what kind of gun guy are you? I want peace, man. I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking for war. It's going to be a horrible thing. I'm just preparing myself. Yeah. Won't be pretty. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to be pretty. I, so. As I say, a thousand rounds, a thousand. Well, anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no missing when it comes to business. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we want to. We know, we know how much. So, okay, let's move on here. That was number. What that was video number five, right? So, right. what was video number six? So, I, th I think we wound up. Um, did we do a couple of those videos on the same day? Uh, four and five were on the. Oh, same four and five day. were on the same day. We're okay, that day. Man, Getting we work it. Yeah, two videos in one day. So the number six, go ahead, Walter. You were, you were getting ready to take off, right? You were getting ready. Yeah, I was getting ready. And sometimes, you know, the way that this whole thing um, works is that sometimes there's going to be things like that because we might get out there and start broadcasting on one subject and then another thing comes up and we're going we're gonna to cover that as well. I mean, that's the whole point here. Um, you know what, and, and, and there's a lot of questions. I think Lola is saying there's a lot of questions about why I'm doing this. And I'm doing it because even though I enjoy making the videos that I've been making and learning about guns and, and learning stuff from folks like Walter and other people out there in, in the gun industry, in the firearms industry, I think that there's a lot of things that aren't being said. And people also, there's like, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of control over other platforms out there. Yeah. So for me, I think this is a way that we can just get that all out. There's really not an agenda to this. I'm just talking, talking about what I, you know. Yeah, yeah, whatever what comes we're up. all thinking about. Right, right, right. Like I've always said that, uh, back to um, our last subject here, I always said there was a missing, if you can get into that, that, that group of people, or mm -hmm. and, and whether it's white or black or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and get all them some, of us. And get us some yeah. edum edumacation, yeah. Um, you've got them. Once you once yeah. they once they see the light, like the gospel. Once they see the gun gospel, yeah, they can't let go. They, they'll be they'll be, they'll be you got them for good. So yeah, and also you know like people think like I've not always been like this. It's funny because I've always been like this. My channel, we've been calling it Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded for a long time. It was never purely a gun channel. I've I put I've put cartoons on my channel. You know, I do a lot of crazy stuff like that and. Um, and I've talked about politics before. Also, you and I, you know this. You know, right. we talk about this stuff behind the scenes. And a lot of times I feel like, wow, you know, if we if we could put those conversations that we have out there, then people would realize. I mean, here you are, you're you're a manufacturer, but you're having these conversations with me. And I think it's because you understand the importance of it, right? Yeah. I mean I I kind of predicted a Trump rise too. When you talk about mm -hmm. things, you know, I said the guy that comes out and mm -hmm. speaks his mind is not it doesn't we, and doesn't apologize every five minutes. Um, yeah, he'll win. He'll win. Yeah, we you know? need that. I think we need that. So the so episode number six was the episode number six was the Father's Father, Day. Father, well, the last uh, of the Father's Days episode yeah. that you were a Scrooge on. Right. Um, you the last of the dads. Last of the dads with nine hundred four outdoors and. Uh, 13 and, uh, gun 50 reviews, percent, right? 50 percent tactical. Yeah, so it was fitty, fitty. That's how you have to say it, Lola. Fitty, 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 fitty percent tactical. 50%. Derek, my friend Derek, good yeah. guy, veteran, you know, awesome dude, very talented. Uh, 13 C gun reviews, Joe, also another good guy. Uh, you, you know, Joe. Um, yep, yep. I haven't introduced you to Derek yet. You weren't on this episode, and you're a dad. Oh, oh you were. You were. You weren't even here. You were in the airport or someplace. I was watching though. I oh, you were watching. watching. Okay, I was watching cool. that one. Yeah, and and Steve from 904 Outdoors, <clears throat> a Florida um, gun guy. So, what do you think about that episode? It was, was interesting. It was interesting. You touched the, on a on a on a tender subject though, the post traumatic stress syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I have ideas about that, but I don't, I'm not going to really go into the details about that because I just don't, I don't have any experience with it. I'm not a veteran, so. Yeah. So I, I can't tell you anything. Yeah, I think Derek, I think if anything, people should watch that. I think Derek handled that pretty well. Obviously, 
it's something that he understands having been a veteran, having um, been injured. Um, you know, I think he had a good perspective on it. And then there was, um, you know, there were some people on there who were talking about them being in pain and stuff like that. And, and I think we really need to like be, you know, we need to be available for our brothers and, and, and be like a sounding board and let them talk to us and talk to them. And sometimes just like have a beer, you know, and just like, hug them, you know, put your hands on their shoulders well, yeah. kind of a thing. And sometimes it's just hanging out. You don't have to go into deep, you know, just, I guess it'd be, yeah. so, I mean, just got a friend, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, we really got to look out for our brothers because I feel like, um, you know, suicide is a terrible thing in and of itself, but the, it seems like, you know, always the generation that goes out there and fights for, for their country, you know, those are like the best. I think, you know, often those are the best people and they fight and they die and they get hurt. And even if they come back and they're okay, they're messed up. And, and eventually if you lose them to suicide, then you've lost those, you know, really good, brave people. All, all I'll say is I think some people go in the military for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. without any expectations of ever having to be in that situation. And mm -hmm. then when it, when it happens, it just done over. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's tough. It's a tough thing. Unfortunately, right, right. So, um, it, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any personal experience, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. No, uh, maybe, and maybe we'll have this discussion, uh, you know, in the future. We'll, we'll get some, uh, you know, I invite some veterans out there that want to come on. I'm, sh I've got a ton of friends out there that are veterans, and I would love to have them on. I'm, I'm constantly inviting people. If you guys want to be part of this, this is why I'm doing it. You know, people think right. I'm really like doing this for me. I'm here, I'm on vacation in a beautiful place. If you saw the view outside of my window, it would blow your mind. What? I don't even know. Let me see if I could like turn the camera around for a second and it could show you. I don't know if it'll adjust. I mean, that's the Ozarks no. out there. Look at that. You know, that's, that's the Ozarks out my window. I mean, it's beautiful. You know, I'm here having, having this conversation with you guys and I'm happy to do it. But I'm doing it because I feel like there's a, um, you know, there's a lot that we all need to say collectively, our conversations we need to have. That's why I'm doing this. So if you guys, if there's things like this you guys want to talk about and come on, uh, I'd love to have you come on and, and talk with us. So hit me up. I'm HankStrange at gmail.com. Let's, let's like actually do this and talk about stuff and really try to change things. Yeah, I think it's fun to to do the gun videos and I'm not going to stop doing those, you know, right. but we should have these conversations, right? So were there any uh, comments on that one, Lola? Um, the, uh, I, I think you kind of hit it, you know, Derek yeah. had made mention about uh, the 22 push-ups or something, something. Yeah, um, yeah that's what we were just saying. don't really do anything to help uh, veterans, yeah. you know, um, with you know all the you know the different disabilities and challenges that they face, so that there should be more genuine attempts, like even a conversation, a cup of coffee, and right. really Just making an effort. So go hang out, go do yeah. something. You know. Yeah, I um, you know, I I think that probably there are some people that those kinds of like the twenty two push ups thing helps, and the ice bucket challenge. So I don't want to take away uh, meaning from that. But a lot of to me, the biggest part of it is like a publicity stunt. And I don't know, you know, I think we should try to do more. I'm not saying don't do it, but let's like really actually do, don't just do your 22 push-ups and then, and then, uh, don't have on. a fear. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't want to do 22 push-ups. <laughs> I'll challenge yeah. you. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. No, I don't want to make light of people doing that because no, I no. think, you know, I think some of the people who do that are doing it to help themselves um, more yeah. than they are trying to help anybody else. Yeah, sometimes you have to feel like you're doing something. And, and, and knowing that this is not necessarily going to solve the problem, as human beings, we need coping mechanisms. We need coping yeah. mechanisms. And, um, and sometimes that stuff is, and I, and I totally get it, but I think that in our world, we've moved away from talking to each other. We really have. We, remember we used to talk? Remember we used to be able to argue with each other and it wasn't like a fight to the death? <laughs> I'm going to get you on yeah, my cell phone. Yeah. 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 These phones, these phones are amazing. They've done some amazing, great things. And, you know, but they've, 
there's a price for everything. And I think that one of the, the prices that we're paying is that we really don't talk to each other anymore. And I think it's too bad. And it affects a lot of relationships, even like just, you know, just interpersonal, you know, man, woman type relationships or, yeah. or if you, friendships. If, if you ditch somebody on your, if you text somebody and ditch them, you're, you're a dick. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I been mean, a victim you know, of that. <laughs> well, you, you ditch somebody on the, with a text. No, someone's victimized. Someone's done that to me. <laughs> oh, oh, well then. Well, I got a note on the yeah. wall one time. I did an old school. I came home one day and there was a note on the wall. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's before okay. my current wife. But Yeah, that's before you met Peggy. Yeah, so. yeah, because she don't do that shit. Wife. No, I wasn't married. I was, that was a girlfriend I lived with. Yeah. Okay. I, I came home and yeah, was She said your only wife. No, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, that's what I got married. I, I mean, there was a pin note on the wall. Wow. A big long thing, you know, and I'm like <laughs> a post-it note. <laughs> I'm like that was before what? that was before text. That was I, like old school texting. I called in the Keller Army and I moved all my shit out that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I had my sisters and my dad helping everybody. We moved all my crap out. Yeah. You know, I, I was I was telling this is like a little bit off the subject, but not that much. I was telling the boys today, listen, you know, there's there's lots of kinds there's lots of women out there. But the crazy ones, you run from. <laughs> you run, run. Forrest, run. <laughs> With all prejudice, <laughs> yeah, strength, yeah. and effort, you run from crazy. Right, right. Don't You can't fix it. All right? Yeah. That's, that's so, somebody else institutionalize or a medicator, not you. Run. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, someone who would communicate with you in that way obviously has issues. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying – I think we've all probably done things in our youth – that that weren't cool but that is like you know you, you've got to communicate with people at least right unless yeah. it's just unless you just feel it's too dangerous then you know then do it by text <laughs> in that case <laughs> if the dude if the dude is a psycho or the chick oh. is a psycho then maybe text yeah. might be a good idea <laughs> yeah run, stay away yeah stay away you know it's better than just like pretending you're dead or faking a marriage <laughs> Yeah, because um, I think I've actually done that once, but we, we're not going to talk about that now. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Onward. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go on. Okay. So that was episode six, right, Lola? So um, six. Okay. And then we had the MPX trigger video, which I encourage folks to watch out there. Uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna do more with that trigger. And so then after that came episode seven. Episode seven, license to kill, police killing with impunity. So this one was yeah. a was a funny episode because you thought you were gonna do it by yourself because right. of the sensitivity of the yeah. subject matter. However, uh, Mark jumped on with you, Fiddy jumped on with you, and you guys had a conversation yeah. about the Fernando yeah. Castillo. Right. So so originally, so episode seven is really about Fernando Castillo. And a lot of people's frustration, including mine and other people out there. Um, and I was going to do it by myself because it is a sensitive subject. And I didn't want to, you know, set people up for a situation where maybe they would. Because, you know, if you talk out against cops, I, I have lots of friends and family and people that I care about that are police officers. I think for the most part, police officers do a job that we ask them to do. I couldn't do it. Yeah, um, and and, and for the most part, they're good guys. You know, most of the guys I come across, I've got tons of people that are fans of my channel, and they're in law, in some kind of law enforcement. And uh, you know, that's cool. For, if they support me, that I've never been in law enforcement, never been in the military, then you know, they they can't be good guys. But there's there's some bad apples in there, or bad eggs, or what, however you want to put it, and Every it's making. Profession. Yeah, and and it, yes, absolutely. Every profession, it's normal in society, and but people are kind of like frustrated about it. And I think this case brings home the frustration even more because this guy had a CCW. You know, he was doing everything the right way, right? We were earlier talking about uh, Maj Touré and how he's trying to encourage people to do things the right way, and he did all of that and still wound up dying and. People feel like there's no justice. Maybe the truth is that there'll never be justice. Maybe the truth is there's things that we don't know. You know, we're, we're like, we're trying, the whole thing about how the justice system works and all that kind of stuff, we're trying to judge, but we're not 
omnipotent. We weren't there. We didn't see everything. We don't know right. everything. So it's really a tough thing, but people are really angry. And I feel like the, the gun community is ignoring this particular thing. And then groups like the NRA and uh, even the US CCA and other groups out there, other gun guys are ignoring this whole thing. And this was, you know, we could put this guy in the category of being a gun guy. And what if it was us that we were trying to do the right thing and, we, and this wound up happening to us? How would we feel about it? And, and then we're, you know, this guy's in the black community and lots of folks in the black community on the gun side of it, including the guys from Urban Sharpshooters were like holding me to task because they were like, well, how come you're not saying anything about it? And it's because it broke right when I was doing another show and I saw it and I wanted to give some time for me to, you know, absorb it and think about it. And then, yeah, and then come back instead of just getting out there and, you know, being all super... Be in mainstream media. Yeah, exactly. And then just, you know, just like like my immediate first reactions of anger and frustration. But I think we do need to voice our anger and frustration with that one. Do you have any – do you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I don't know all the details of what happened and why it happened. But, yeah, I think sometimes – and I'll say it kind of like I said about some of the people in the military. They don't belong in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And they choose it because it's to job. Mm -hmm. Who's clapping something there? Is that I'll, you? I'll, I'll stop. Um, yeah, my, ner my nervous side. Oh. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, things happen, and I, I don't know the details, and I wasn't there, like you were saying. So it's yeah. kind of hard to figure it out. But I think there needs there's there's this tendency now to shoot first and ask questions later in all the situations, and I it, I guess it came as a result of so many cops being killed. Um, yeah, I think, I, I feel like there's training or something going on that says, you know, your first thing, just shoot. And when you shoot, just shoot to kill. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we've got to, I think we have to have some kind of discussion about it. I'm not trying to bring down the profession. We, no. we decide that we want police officers. Right? I, I, could, I couldn't do the job, so I said that before. I don't have a tolerance. Yeah. Well, obviously, we have to be responsible for ourselves, and this, and we're and we're guys that are doing that. If you're a genuine gun guy, you're out there doing that. You're 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 defending yourself. You're thinking about your family, your property, and other people when you when you get into this, or you should be. Um, but still, this is a job that we require people to do. I think I'm going to reiterate what I said in the video, but I invite you guys to go there, watch the video, and. And if you're a police officer and you're mad at me, let me know that. If you wanna, if you wanna come on, you know, if they're police officers or people in law enforcement that can talk, because you know what, I realize that if if some people talk about this, they're gonna, you know, maybe if they attack me, they might be good. But if they talk about this and kind of agree with what we're saying publicly, then they might get into trouble. All right, right, right. So you know, let us know. But I think that there should be. Definitely more training, more money, um, and more talking between the communities about policies and what to do when you're, you know, it, like when you're a member of the public and you come across a police officer, and then also training for police officers on what to do when you come across members of the public that are armed legally. Um, even if they're illegally armed, you don't necessarily have to kill them. No. But I, I, I understand that that you know there's inherent dangers there. But we all need to talk about this. And then you know I think on top of it, a big thing that I didn't think I get I got to say enough in that video. And Lola can um, tell me what comments people have about that. If you're a police officer and you're anti-gun and you don't like guns and you're afraid of guns, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong business for sure. Yeah. Once again, that's somebody that shouldn't be a, in law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the conversation that we had there. And, um, you know, look, I, I intended on doing it on my own, and then Mark jumped in. You know Mark, right? right you've right, you've right, met right. him. You yeah, know, we had it. Our first conversation was very interesting. At, at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark likes to Mark likes to fight. People, I don't think people realize that. He likes to stir it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, he likes to be contrarian to me. So in the beginning, he's like, he came on, you know, to have my back. But then the kind of person he is, he always tries to hold me to task. Right. So if you watch that, you'll see Mark doing that. And then, uh, and then, uh, fifty percent tactical came on there, Derek. 
and I think he he made some good points as well, and I'm, I'm grateful he came on. What kind of comments did we get out of that, Lola? Um, you know, so with with that, people were clearly angry. Um, mm -hmm. So we got a lot of anger at the verdict, at the not guilty of, verdict. A lot of anger at the lot at the not guilty verdict. Um, you uh, so like one comment, even being legally licensed in America can get you killed faster than a career criminal who carries illegally. You know, that's 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 a, a caps, I guess, like a encapsulation. Encapsulation, yeah, yeah. Of, of people's feelings. I think that's why there's so many, you know, there's so many people out there that are angry about it. Um, I don't think it's all just like the, you know, the the black side of this equation. Or, you know, I think that there are other gun guys that are like, well, what's going on here? You know, is this going to be the norm? Are we in danger because we're carrying and then we, we're, we're trying to be respectful and we're trying to notify people that we're armed, etc. cetera? So what do you think about that, Walter? Um, I hope it's not the norm, but another side of this, would people be as upset if it was a white guy that, that happened to? I don't know. It happens a lot. It, it happens more than you hear. I would be. I, I, I mean, you know, if, but I mean, if, if it's if, a gun guy, you know, a gun guy, the, a guy who is legally carrying and all that deserves some kind of protection for jumping through the hoops. You know, this is why well, people don't want to do it. This is why people right. don't want to jump through the hoops and get their fingerprints and do this thing and do that thing. Because in the end, you're still in the same position. You know, you're still a criminal. You're still, you know, you're still a bad guy. And, and you shouldn't be. And I think a big part of that it comes back to there's people out there that are police officers and they don't like guns and they're scared of guns. I mean, I've dealt with police officers that, you know, and I've seen it and I've heard stories and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of good, you know, antidotes out there about police officers who are not afraid of guns and come across people who are armed and, not, and did not disarm them and did not shoot them and did not panic. Right. You know, they just told those guys, okay, you're armed. You know, just keep your hands where I could see them, right, and right, let's right. let's get this. You let's know, talk. let's have this conversation. Yeah, let's right. get this done. So that brings us back to the fact that yeah, there are lots of good you know police officers out there, and the right guys for the job. The problem is we don't train people enough, we don't pay them well enough, we don't screen them well enough, right. and not everyone should be doing the job. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't you know. know. It's uh, it's the whole mood right now. I think. Um, They've had a bad year, the police, and not so much just from people killing them, but the government or the, the former government um, talking bad about them all the time and making them the bad guys. So yeah, for um, sure, we had a president that was not on the side of the police. Sorry, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, and I, and I have a friend of mine who, you know, I like I always tell people before I started doing this, I was in hip hop. You've heard that for me before, right? Right, right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was a producer of hip hop and I wrote stuff and all that, you know, I had the studio. I was like Puffy. I was like Puff Daddy. Oh, and where's your jet? But yeah, I didn't have a jet. <laughs> I, was, I was like a low budget. <laughs> we we got to be balling version. next time we go to SEMA or something. You know, we got to find. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm trying to get to that level. But I was. And the artist that I was dealing with, who's a really good friend of mine, um, you know, he, he became a paramedic after we, you know, obviously I got out of that. And uh, consequently, so did he. And he became a paramedic, and he later became a police officer, and his girlfriend is also a police officer. And obviously, you know, these are people of color. And, um, you know, I really, you know, that's like my brother right there. You know, I really care about this guy. And I, I talked to him during this, and he said, wow, man, it's tough. It's tough to be a cop right now, and it's tough to be a black cop right now. You know, because yeah. it's like it's like a double, you know, double whammy that you're cool. you're the popo, and then you're like a black guy. So people feel feel like you're a traitor because right, there's people right. who think that it's not just white people, white police officers that are killing black people, that it's black police officers. I mean, and what are you going to do? I mean, ultimately, your your life is in danger here, and well, you've got to somehow deal with that, right? Right. Well, if it comes down to that, yeah, you you take care of business. I mean, yeah. but I mean, but once again. I, I, it's, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, weird situation. I mean, I've talked to other police officers of color and stuff like that. We've got some in the gun YouTube community, and they tell me they're afraid of getting killed by police officers. <laughs> oh, oh, well, and they're on the job, you know. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, one of my big fears is that <laughs> another police officer is going to kill me because he's going to look at my face and not realize that I'm a police officer. Right, you right, know? right, and. 
and just react. So we're all afraid of this and we're all frustrated and this, there seems to be like a lot of frustration out there. Well, the, the last the last eight years didn't help anything. I'll just say that, and we'll we'll leave that. <laughs> yeah, that. the last eight years didn't help, and then the last year hasn't been helpful either. You know, well, and yeah. we're just making this situation worse for ourselves on this planet. We're all living on this planet. We haven't figured out a way to really on it's kind mass of, get off it's the planet. Building, yet. it's built. Well, yeah, it's building, it's building, it's building. You know, it's bubbling up. Yeah, it's it's like uh, a, a boiling pot. You know, that with a lid that, on it that's about to explode. That's what certain parts of, uh, we'll say the gov or the f former gov wanted to happen anyways. I think so. I think there are people that are looking for us to like break and attack each other and they want the anarchy and they want everything to break down. And I just don't think that people realize what that how it, really truly means. How that would happen would not be pleasant. Yeah, it wouldn't be, you know. <laughs> Um, I think we should prepare for that. I think in some cases we have people attacking us, you know, fighting us. We're, I've been saying this for a long time. We're at war with ourselves. Oh, we're our, we're our own worst enemy. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I mean, even in the gun community, we're attacking each other. We're destroying each other. You know this. I don't have to tell you. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're just like we're inside the gun community and we're small in America. People think it's so huge because there's so many guns and, and there's lots of people that own guns. But real died in the wool gun guys, you know, like in the Fifth Element movie, <laughs> when when um, when that when that character, I forget his name, but, uh, you know, um, I don't know. Zorg, don't know. Zorg, you know, when Zorg is talking about like, you know, he sells these guys, these aliens a gun. He said if he was a real died in the wool gun guy. He would have asked about that button. Well, we are real dyed in the wool gun guys, and we are attacking each other like crabs in a barrel. And and so while we're trying to kill each other inside of the barrel and we're attacking each other, then there's people trying to like burn down the barrel. <laughs> uh, yeah, empty the barrel, all the water. Yeah. yeah, from the outside, there's people attacking us, and we're on the inside attacking us. And then as Americans, we're attacking each other just because we don't agree. And, you know, we don't agree politically, and we don't agree in this thing and that thing. And then there's people out. So in, inside of America, we're destroying each other. And then outside of America, there are people who hate us. America is stands up as like this beacon. There's people outside of America want to either come here and, and participate in the freedom that we have to this land of milk and honey and where the money grows on trees. Right, right. Or they hate us and they want to burn this down. Right, right. Yeah. You know, so. But we can still do it. You know, yeah. You know. you, you'd already be in jail, so. Yeah. And, and, and I think that I think we can still pull ourselves out of all of this if we would just realize that. You know, this is really about freedom. You know, there's people who, if you if you don't believe in guns and all that kind of stuff, That's you're fine. free. You're, yeah, you're free to to not protect yourself. You're free to but not have guns. You know, don't t don't tell um, me I can't though. Yeah. You know, you know, if you don't want it, that's fine. But just don't try to push it on me. Yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. Like if you want to pay, I I, I was watching something. Um, I think it was another podcast. And these guys are talking about, you know, America's so terrible and Trump's so horrible. He doesn't want to, you know, he wants to like save, save tax, you know, save all these uh, big, big shots from having to pay taxes and all this kind of stuff, you know. And and there was a guy saying like, yeah, man, you know, because I'm a, I'm an entertainer, but because I got money, I don't pay taxes, and this is horrible. Well, guess what? It's the same thing. You're free. You are free to pay as much taxes as you want yeah, to. You can send them a million dollars if you want. They'll take it. Yeah, there's there's special lines there. You can donate as much as you want. Yeah, that you could say, government, take this all this money and do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, I mean, you know? they'll just let us waste it anyways. But you know, send them yeah, all whatever. You want. You're you're free to do that. There's there's the there's the rest of us who are out here and we're working. You know, instead of living off of the system, we are working and generating income, generating business, um, and it's. Really, it's really tough. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. You're a manufacturer. You're well yeah. aware of this. You know, but it's and it's slow in the gun business now. By the way, too. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, this is this is a tough time, and that's and it's uh, and it's also a little bit of the gun industry's own doing, don't you think? Their own, it's their own fault because they put their money behind the wrong person. 
Yeah, I think a lot of we, we talked about this before the elections, during the elections. Um, a lot of gun companies, a lot of gun manufacturers had the Hillary Clinton plan of success. Oh, yeah. That we're going to make millions on, on Hillary for, for five yeah. minutes anyways. Yeah, or, we're going to. Yeah. Or Go six ahead. months or whatever until they start banning stuff. And then, you know, but. Yeah, they, <laughs> they thought that they would sell like every AR-15 and everyone was making an AR-15 and they're going to just yeah. sell all of this stuff. And. You know, and then yeah, maybe they would just pack up because she was going to ban everything. So they would just take all their money and go off into another business. So they went out there and they really like they borrowed money and built factories and bought machinery or leased machinery and all kinds right. of stuff. And then they just built the same gun over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. The same old AR-15. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you know, and um, lots of people got into suppressors and all of that kind of stuff. The whole suppressor thing is on us too because we've been. You know, I, I want suppressors to come off the NFA. Trust me, I do. Yeah. But we're but, but we're out there like pushing it, and then everyone's like, "Well, okay, I, if that's going to happen, I'm just going to wait." <laughs> well, that's human nature. Yeah. Right. So that's killing that's killing um, the industry as well because it's waiting, and I'm not trying to you know. Well, I always say people ask me how I'm doing. I said, "How's it going?" I said, "Fine. It's normal." Yeah. It's the way it's the way it's the way it should be if it wouldn't have had Obama. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and you didn't necessarily you know, I think you, you don't manufacture a, a regular AR fifteen. No, and but you I don't I, necessarily I, have that plan, right? You I, you don't have that plan at all. Well, if we're gonna do ARs, they're gonna be little ones. Little sh SBRs mm -hmm. and stuff. But I also sell parts and pieces that are not twelve hundred dollars or eighteen hundred dollars a piece. So I always I'm always selling something. Something's always yeah. moving. If the big stuff's not moving, the little stuff's moving. So yeah. if you do, if you if you do, if your life depends on selling that twelve hundred dollar can, and they ain't buying, that's tough times. So yeah. <laughs> it's mean, unfortunate. I think that we're going to go back to like if this continues for a few years. I know there was a little bit of ray of sunshine. Did you see that? Oh, um, on the on the suppressor part. Yeah, that I think yeah. they moved the language over to another bill. And yeah, attached it to something else. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's like, yeah, I will, we could talk about this forever. I really yeah. wanted this to be a, a, you know, kind of like a week in review kind of thing of the, the past videos that we did. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to, yeah, even though I'm here on vacation, I mean, def, you know, Walter's got to go. I've got to go. But even though I'm here on vacation, I'm going to try. I'm going to keep an eye on the news. If there's things that come up that you guys want to talk about, let me know, and we'll definitely come back and talk about whatever is on our oh. mind, whatever is current. What's up? One thing today, I saw that that CBS uh, um, CBS News, um, one of the mm -hmm. guys, the main guys, said that 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 senator, or that congressman, basically deserves what he, or it was part of his own fault that he got shot. Wow. Self-inflicted. Yeah. That takes balls to say shit like that. I mean, <laughs> nobody, That's crazy. nobody, no, nobody deserves to be shot in the hip by, with a, with a seven, six, two by 30 down round. Nobody, not even, not even any of those other Democrat types. So, no. and then they all get together and they all act like they're all happy again. And let's be friends. Yeah. You know, so if know. we said that, if we said that someone that was a victim of gun violence, you know, deserved it right and and yeah. let's say we said it because i think it would be horrible for anyone to say that about children or well yeah he deserved know, it. like um that that kid deserved to be raped right yeah but let's say we say, let's say we even said it about a politician like uh you know um the giffords for example you right, know right. oh she deserved to be shot in the head right yeah that oh, would be a terrible right. th that would be a terrible thing to say no human being deserves that you know right, no right, no right. one's family deserves to have to deal with that no no person yeah. Deserves so you trying to destroy them. And and as a matter of fact, if you're going to destroy people like that who haven't done anything to you, who aren't trying to destroy you, you're the kind of individual we, we don't want on this planet. Right. I mean, and then, then he bails out and he quits his job, I guess, after he said that or something. So who is it that said this? A reporter? Um, no, he's one of the, the the main guys that actually delivers the news on CBS. The oh, wow. News. Like an anchor. Yeah. Yeah. He said that stuff on the air, I think. Or said at some point, wow. yeah, and I'm like, that wow. takes, you know. But I, it shows I, it should show you what's going on behind the scenes with the media. The media is 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 one is heavily one sided, and they're they're deliberately doing everything in their power to sabotage and torpedo 
the current administration. But they don't. And they don't seem to get yeah. it. They're torpedoing themselves. Because, because we see it. We see it. It's like uh, I know you're not into movies, but it's like V for Vendetta. You know, if you look at that movie. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that one though. Yeah. No. <laughs> Why am I surprised? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, was that it, on the it, History it, Channel? No, it wasn't. It, it had oh, nothing sorry. to do with. There were tanks. I think there were some tanks in there. But oh, okay. okay. You know, um, and a lot of guns. A lot of guns in there. But yeah. you know, it's a it's a movie about where the government completely controls the people, and, and they control the news media, and eventually the people don't believe the news media. Right. So they can tell that they're just lying to them every day and trying to bamboozle them. Right, right. It's the same old, same old crap every day. Yeah. Well, you know, same like it's, it's the same way on the mainstream media here. They don't report. They only report what they want to report. You know. Yeah. And if yeah. it doesn't meet the narrative, then it didn't happen, or you know, it's uh, it's in the back page. So. Yeah. I think we'll, you know, we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. I'll look into it and see what's going on there. I'm sure there'll be other things. I saw that there was something in the news where there was a, a pregnant black woman that was killed. By police officers that's something that's breaking but I don't oh, think wow. it's it's quite as simple because I think that she said that someone she was living in like a public assistance hotel or something and uh, she called the police because she said someone broke into to the hotel room and stole something so she called the police but they had a lot of problems with that particular place so they sent uh, more than one officer, a few officers down there, and when they got there, she had a knife in her hand, but oh. she was pregnant, and she had four children, and they wound up opening fire on her and killing her. So, I mean, that's one of those things that we really, it's the same, you know, we don't know what happened, we don't know why that went down, but it's a horrible story, you know, I mean, like, it would have to be something really, really terrible to kill a pregnant mother. Unless she was trying to kill her kids or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we obviously, we don't know. I mean, that's the thing that we have to say. Right now, we don't know. But I know those kinds of things are breaking. That's what's going on here. News is breaking all the time. So where, yeah. you know, some of these things we want to talk about and, and, and bring it up with you guys. And we'll do that as the week goes on, as I can, because I do have to go out and do family activities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so, no. Yeah. No, I'm looking I, forward to it. I huh? had to work. I had to work today, and I felt like crap. You were not ready to go to work, man. You were, so. Uh, but there's all kinds. The shop, kind, did the shop kind of, hold up? Is the does the roof? Is there a roof over the shop right now? It poured today. Yes, there is a roof over the shop. Yes. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good. No, everything everything kept going. If anybody's worrying worrying about their stuff. The guys were still yeah. working and making things. So yeah, you do have some good guys that that uh, were there holding down the fort. And girl, so. and girl, and girl, yeah. girls, yeah. girls, girls, girls. Absolutely. So you know what? As the last thing here, I want to remind people to comment here, share these videos, and uh, you know, definitely thanks for watching. I want to thank the people that support me, like Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms and Andrew's Custom Leather, Rand CLP, and definitely Big Daddy Guns that. You know, it's given us the forum, given us the studio and the broadband and everything like that to do this. I want to thank everyone out there. And I want to remind people that if you want to support us, we're on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. You know, we uh, we can definitely use that support as well so that we can keep, keep building up the studio and be able to do more of this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. A any last words, Walter? Um, what's Lola cooking? What's what are you cooking, Lola? What's for dinner, woman? Rotisserie chicken, mac and cheese. Rotisserie favorite, broccoli. Rotisserie chicken, mac and cheese, and broccoli. Which <laughs> uh, I'll pass on the broccoli, but I do the yeah. mac and cheese. Now. You know Walter says he'll pass on the broccoli. Me too. I pass also. <laughs> I second. I second that passage. Right, salad, salad? No, that's worse. Uh, I don't know. I don't know which I, one's. I, I was weaned on macaroni and cheese, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, no, not a salad. Maybe a fruit salad, but not a regular salad. Yeah, fruit salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we're doing here. All right. I want to thank everyone for watching um, and watching all the videos. We're going to keep trying to do this stuff. And I do want to apologize for the video we tried to do yesterday. We tried to do this video yesterday on the road, and it came out pretty terrible. So if you watch that and you couldn't hear it and all that kind of stuff, you know, we try things, and they don't always work. So Yeah. Yeah, that didn't work, but we experiment. That's life. You know, you got to go out there and, Don't and try, try you'll never know. So. Yeah, absolutely. So we got it going this time, man. We made it happen. All right? Yeah. 
Thanks for joining me, Walter. Stay right there. I'm going to end the broadcast. Peace out, folks. Peace.